Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all having a good day. My name is Nandini, and I'm an engineer in Service Cloud in Salesforce. So before we start anything, Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Make all your decisions based on what's available in the market. I think you all know that by now. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is using skills-based routing, but with as little to no code as possible. So we'll first go over an introduction of what omnichannel is, and then we'll look at what skills-based routing is specifically, and then do a more detailed deep dive with a demo. Uh, so what is omnichannel? Omnichannel lets you route work to agents who are the most capable for that type of work. You can decide what type of work agents get. You can decide how much work agents will get. And you can also decide the different channels that agents can work on. Also, if you own a contact center, you probably want to know what's happening in your contact center. And you can do this with the omnichannel supervisor. It gives you an overall view of the health of your uh, contact center. So. In the past, Omnichannel has always worked with queues. So what Omnichannel did was something called queue-based routing. Imagine you had a contact center. You set up a new company. You sell a couple of products. You work with customers who speak like four different languages. So now if you had four products, four languages, just for that combination, you would set up about 16 queues. And you would push work into those queues. Omnichannel queue-based routing would take care of routing, and the work would get assigned to agents, and then they could work on it. But if you think about it, if you just add one more product, you suddenly have to create four extra queues, because you want to support all the languages. And this is where skills-based routing comes in. Each language, each product, each department could just be a skill. And it makes logical sense, because your agents are probably skilled in those things. So with skills-based routing, you assign skills to agents, you assign skills to work, and Omnichannel takes care of the rest and puts it all together. So the reason I wanted to talk about this today is that in previous releases, if you wanted to set up skills-based routing, you had to go through a lot of effort. You had to use Apex, and there was really no code-free way to do it. So if you had a complex routing scenario, you probably have a bunch of if statements and catch blocks, and you, know, you had to hard code a few values here and there. Upkeep was hard. But with this release, you can now use a few different things that make it possible for different types of organizations to have a code-free approach to skills-based routing. If you have a really simple organization, you can use a setup flow called attribute-based routing, and that will let you set up skills-based routing without any extra effort. If you have a slightly bigger contact center, you have a bunch of skills, you want to have a few AND conditions or conditions, just use the power of the platform. Use flows like you would do for any other process, and use the invocable action, which will do everything you need for skills-based routing to work. So this talks about what skills-based routing is from Omnichannel's perspective. I think it's easy to understand that if you have agents, they need skills, and so you would assign skills to agents. But the routing piece of it is a little bit more complicated. Omnichannel has the concept of a pending service routing. If any of you have already used it, you would know that this is what Omnichannel actually routes. So for skills-based routing, whether you do it or an invocable action does it, the first step is you create the pending service routing for your object, say a case. Now, once you've created that, you need to assign skills to that case so that Omnichannel knows who should get it. Once you've assigned the skills, the next step is to update the pending service routing so that Omnichannel knows that you're done assigning skills and that you want Omnichannel to route that work. Um, let's look at a demo. I'll have to do it this way. So I have an org where, let's go back to a previous example. You have, say, four products. You sell phones, TVs, home security systems, and modems. And because you have an online store, you have like an accounts department, a billing department, a support department, and an R&D department that takes care of the actual products. So the first step would be to switch on skills-based routing for your org. How you do that is you go to Setup and go to Omnichannel Settings and turn on skills-based routing. Also, skills-based routing will work fine with anything you already have set up. So if you have Omnichannel set up already, that's fine. Once you turn this on, it's just an extra feature that works. 
So once you've turned on skills-based routing over here, the next step would be to actually create skills for your org. I already have a bunch of skills, but let's create a new one here. And I'll call it Trailhead. So you'll see the assigned users assign profiles, but in this case, you don't actually use this setup. You just create the skill here. How you assign this created skill to an agent is by using service resources. So you go to a service resource. And I already have one for my user, Nandini. The thing to note here is that, one, your service resource needs to be active. Otherwise, nothing takes effect. And two, it needs to be of type agent, because otherwise, Omnichannel doesn't know that that is an Omni agent. So once you've created your service resource, you go to the related list, and you add a skill. So I created Trailhead. Um, there's also a concept of skill level, which is proficiency. So higher the skill level, you're more proficient in that skill. So I don't think I know much about this, so I'm going to give myself a two. So you have a start date. You don't need an end date. Save it, and that's all you need. Now, anytime the agent goes online in Omnichannel, uh, we'll know that the skill has taken effect. So this was the easier part, how to set up skills for your agent. It's just a question of assigning it. But let's also look at, let me just present this again. So this is what I want to do. It's a very simple routing system where I look at a case, look at two different criteria, and I wanted to assign a bunch of skills to the case, and Omnichannel should route it. It looks at case category. It looks at case reason. And at the end of it, if I want to set priority, I can set priority and route the work. In previous releases, how you would do this is you would go to setup. And you would create an Apex class if you click on it. There you go. You would create an Apex class which would look something like this. Now, this is probably the simplest non-production ready type of code possible. I have hard coded all the values. I'm not doing any, any error checking. Even then, it's like a good 80 to 90 lines of code. And this is extremely hard to keep up with, because you probably skill agents regularly in new things. And then you'd have to like add a, another if condition, another else condition, make sure it works. So instead of this, what you could do is use flows. Now, if you look at that diagram I showed earlier, it basically looks like a flow. And it's easy to think of it that way and create a flow like this. So I have cases. I had four different categories of cases I wanted to create skills for. I had case reason. And then there was a priority decision that had to be made. And then I call the invocable action. And this is what really makes it so much easier for you. What the invocable action does is those three steps I talked about. It'll create the pending service routing. It'll create your skill requirements. And it'll update your pending service routing so it's ready for routing. Uh, let's just look at what the invocable action looks like. So this is like any invocable action in flows. Uh, if you're used to that, this probably looks very normal to you. Uh, so you go to the routing category and choose skills-based routing. This invocable action takes three inputs. Record ID, which in this case is the cases ID. Uh, I think I'd called it this. The routing configuration ID. And um, I don't remember if I touched on this, but routing configuration will define the priority and weight of work when it reaches an agent. So you probably have already got routing configurations in your org, and that's what you'd have here. I already have that set up. And, and so the skill IDs are optional because you can route works by skill-based routing, even if you don't have any skills. So I have that, and I would click Done, and that would be it. So this is how one of the ways in which you could use the invocable action. You are free to use the invocable action through Apex if that's what you want to do. But because it's available through flows, 
it's just so much easier to set up. And since that was an auto launch flow, I have a process builder process, and that's what kicks off routing. In this case, I just have a field which I'm using to define that it is skills based routing, and that calls the flow and sends the case. So let's look at this in action. I, I'm going to go online in Omnichannel. In the Omnichannel supervisor, you can see that these are the skills that the agent has. And now I'm going to create a case. So let's say we had home security systems. It's a complaint. The customer is saying that my alarm keeps beeping. And it came from the web. And that's it. Oops. That would be it if I had clicked that. But now that's it. And, that, and it routes, because we've set up the flow, we've set up process builder, and that's all Omnichannel needed to route this work. So I can see here in the Omni supervisor that because of the values I chose for my case with case reason and case type, I have these skills that were associated with the case. So now, if you think about it, this was like you didn't really need to use flows for this scenario. It was a very simple case. You just had two fields. You knew all the values you needed. You knew all the skills you needed. So instead of using flows, which you absolutely can do if that's what you're used to, you could also use a setup flow, which we have introduced called attribute-based routing. It's a step above skills-based routing. So think of it as the UI version of setting up skills-based routing. So over here, you will have one attribute mapping per entity. So in this case, I already have something for cases. But let me just delete that and start it again. So I'm going to call it a case. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it works for any non-real-time channel, so it does not work for chat or messaging. And then in my flow chart, I had case reason and category. And the reason I'm able to do this here in a demo that's only 20 minutes is that it's easy enough to do this. I can choose, I think it was complaint, and I had support for cases as my skill. I can choose a skill level if I want to. Let's do a couple more. And what it was home security, so I know I need security. I, f I also sell TVs. Uh, you can go on doing this. But the thing to note about this is that it works well for simple orgs. And the reason I say it works well for simple orgs is that if you look at this, what this means is if the value is security, skill is security. If the value is TV, skill is communication. It doesn't, you cannot do if, if it is home security and something else is complaint, then skill is something else. There is no or and kind of uh, thing which you would have with like assignment rules. So that's where the power of this is its simplicity, because in many cases, all you want is something that's basically a flowchart. You're not really looking for something more. And then this works really well for your use case. If you need something more complicated, flows would fit pretty much any other criteria. So how do you use attribute-based routing? We've already set up the attribute mapping sets. Uh, the next thing you do would be to create the thing I talked about before, the routing configuration. I already have one, but um, the thing you need here to say that it's going to work with attribute-based routing is this checkbox. Once you check this, these values will be passed to the pending service routing when it's created. So you can see that there's a high priority case. Uh, I'm using this value. I've got it's worth one. And that would be a routing configuration. Like any other routing configuration for Omni, what you would do next is create a queue with that routing configuration. I've already created it here. And you associate the routing configuration. 
The thing to note here is that queue membership doesn't really matter in this case because what matters is not the queues. It's whether the agent has the skills needed or not. So even if someone is not part of this queue, if they have the right skills, the work will get routed to them. And now let's look at this one in action. Let's create another case. And this time, we'll do the same thing. It's a complaint. It was home security. Some reason, alarms keep on beeping everywhere. But now think of it as regular omni-channel. So we created a queue. You would change the owner to the queue. And you can see that this case just came in. And if we look at the supervisor, you will see that it has the same set of skills, because that's what we set up with attribute-based mapping. Uh, and you could see how much easier it was for me to do attribute-based routing setup. Like, I wouldn't dare set up a flow in 20 minutes over here, because I'd have to look up so many different things. Uh, it's also easier because they are lookup fields, so you can just look up any skill that's there when you're setting it up. Um, Another thing that you can do with skills-based routing is you can transfer work. So I have another agent here who's going to go online. This agent has a different set of skills. And let's transfer this work. So when I transfer the work, it autofills the skills that the case came in with. But I can also just be like, OK, this is really simple. I don't need to work on this. This person can work on this and accept the work. So you can see that these items shows us, show up in a separate thing, which you've probably seen before, called the skills backlog. And you can keep track of what's available for the communication skill, what's available for R&D. And that's pretty much it. This is how you would set up skills-based routing for an org without any code. I have a few additional resources. I can post this deck so you can uh, get to it easily. Uh, but thank you. I'm open for any questions. I can expand it as well. If. There you go. I'll be off to the side if you have questions.